Good evening, everybody. Chris and Tiffany here with High Seas Cruising, and welcome to this week's live. Unfortunately, Tiffany over here has got some allergies kicking her rear end tonight. Um, so she may be doing a little, unfortunately, be doing a little coughing during tonight's video. Sorry. And of course, it doesn't start until we fix to go live. She's been quiet for like two hours, and then we hit go live, and she's it. <laughs> You know, one of those Murphy Law types of situations. But all right, we got folk already in here today. We got Lisa Marie. 
That's Hay from New York. Uh, Cody, thank you, sir. We appreciate that. Tilla the Fun and Linda and Jeff are here on a sea day somewhere between Fiji and Tahiti. Now, I did send you guys a email. I got the pictures that you guys sent, the little video that you guys got, but I didn't want to share that or promised I was going to share that without your guys' permission. So it's up to you guys. If it's all right with y'all, I am ready and happy to show those tonight. Um, but completely your call. Says, hey, everyone. And Jen, hi from Central Maine. Central Maine. A bit of everywhere. Yeah, we do we got a little bit of everywhere. Some New York, some Maine, some somewhere between Tahiti. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. I like it too. So, how has everybody's week been? Anything interesting? Anything exciting? I had a little bit of excitement today. Okay. You were there. Shout out to She goes, What? But yeah, I actually had to go to. Now, this was for work. Chris was not in trouble, but I actually had to go get fingerprinted today. <laughs> they required fingerprints for a job I'm doing uh, for the state of South Dakota. And yeah, I had to go get fingerprints done today. But that was kind of interesting. So it wasn't in any kind of trouble, but you know, I was going to say, I went down to the sheriff's office and you fill out the paperwork and they take your ID and then the sheriff. Oh, sheriff's deputy comes and gets you and you walk through the back and everything like that you almost feel like a little anxious it's like i know i'm not in trouble i didn't do anything wrong this is just for work but you're still like i'm getting escorted around by sheriffs like i've been bad i don't know why i have no i don't know uh, this may not be a long life tonight i don't know if Tiffany's gonna make it um, but yeah, so I got fingerprinted today and I have been fingerprinted in 20, over 20 years back when I was in the military and things like that. So I don't know, I've gotten older and experiences become more important, you know, the experience of doing something, the making a memory with it. And it seems a little silly, but getting fingerprinted, I thought was an experience and I thought it was a kind of an interesting one. It's something new. Um, Alien Frequency says, howdy, Chris and Tiffany. Hello, chat. Um, Lisa Marie, the eclipse in totality, it was awesome. We missed it because it was, it was really super, cloudy. super cloudy that day. It was super, super cloudy. I was on a work. I, I saw it start to get dim outside. It started to get darker. It got dark and it only lasted a couple minutes and then it started getting light again. I was stuck on a work call right when it was darkest. I was stuck on a work call, and I just could not get them off the phone. Uh, I went outside. It I did not. cloudy to see even where the sun and moon were. I, I, I missed the entire thing over a work call. It's kind of disappointing. But, you know, again, Murphy's Law. I was waiting. I had timed. I was going to be ready, free to go outside and see it. And of course, a work call comes in, and right then we missed the whole thing. Yes. So that kind of sucked. California Linda shares, I just got back from a scavenger hunt. I will also organize a scavenger hunt for the group cruise. So much fun. Okay to share. Okay. Perfect. We've, we've done a scavenger hunt on the group cruise. Um, or not a group cruise, but we've done a scavenger, scavenger hunt, on hunt, cruise. hunt on a cruise. And we were the first ones back, but we didn't do everything, so we didn't win. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember that. We didn't win because one of the questions was to go, or one of the things you had to go find was take pictures of. Have somebody take their shirt off. Yeah, take their shirt off and take a picture of without their shirt on. And Chris didn't feel comfortable asking somebody to take their shirt off. Yeah. And it couldn't be either one of us. And I'm like, okay, well, we don't know anybody else on the ship right now. And to me, that's creepy. Hey, excuse me. Can you take your shirt off so I can photograph you? That, that, that whole question came across as a little bit creepy. So just don't put that in there. <laughs> but they say it's okay to share. 
Um, Bajoran, I got the first four numbers in the Powerball for a minute. I thought I was going to be rich. Does that count as exciting? Yes. yes. For the first four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we played the Powerball. We did not win. We'd be a lot more excited if we had one. You didn't get a number. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Dale. <laughs> Until I got fingered for my job, not once, but every three to four years, we have to go back and redo the whole thing. Yeah, you know, I, I thought that too, that it's like, okay, my fingerprints are on file. They're on file with the government. I'm surprised that they would need me to do them again. It's like, my, didn't, no, my fingerprints haven't changed. I figured once they have all of your information, they have it for life. But I, maybe it's because it was state specific and not federal that they can't look. I I don't know. Even the uh, the deputy sheriff was like, he goes, I don't know. Maybe they don't talk to each other. So, but it, it was an experience. And it probably could change a little bit because I mean, if you cut your finger, or get a scar, it changes your fingerprint. And mom, she's hers have worn down so bad she doesn't look like she got fingerprints no it's she's a cat work <laughs> that's what i'm hearing uh da, 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 da. uh california lender shares we won yesterday tied today no such questions like that yeah we would have won it but that one question i just i i am not the person to go up to a random stranger go let me take a picture of you with your shirt off you know, that just sounds like security, <laughs> this guy, kind of question. Uh, pretty May week here. I'm waiting and for a better job to come through. Nothing yet, but we have a cruise in 17 days on the Pride, whether out of Norfolk or Baltimore, we're not. We're so ready. <laughs> uh, hopefully we hear something on Baltimore here soon. I know those folks that are currently out on the Pride are waiting to hear and right now all carnival says is they are in contact with baltimore and we'll let somebody know as soon as possible so and i know it's out of their hands they really they're they're in a waiting game the same as everybody else unfortunately well uh, andre says going on a italy cruise next month can't wait now that sounds exciting uh, that, that would be awesome yeah italy heck yeah Bajorn says they change. I have a scar down the middle of my right thumb that wasn't there the original time. And, and that very well could be it. I mean, it took longer to drive there than anything else. And at the end of the day, I, I chalk it up to a new experience. Mm -hmm. Something that, you know, I haven't done in a long time. And since, you know, you're not in trouble and, you know, it isn't anything like, you know, you're about to go to the jail or anything like that. It's... It, it's kind of entertaining, you know, you get to laugh and joke with the officer and he spent some time actually showing me how to properly do fingerprints and stuff like that. And it was cool, you know, and he was a, he was a good guy. It was very nice. So it kind of been fun. California Linda's doing an awesome experience. Uh, laughingly shares both today and tomorrow are April 11th because they're passing through the international date line. Exciting. <laughs> Two days. It's almost like, like going back in time and getting a repeat. It's Groundhog like, Day. It's like Groundhog Day on the cruise ship. That's cool. What's in the cruise news this week? I'm out of the loop. <laughs> uh, this week, it's been relatively <laughs> quiet. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines announced that they are, they have ordered uh, brand new cruise ships. They've ordered a total of eight over the next 10 years. Four of them, and that's across all of Norwegian's brands, um, but four of them are going to Norwegian Cruise Lines, and they're going to be bigger ships. Um, they're saying 200,000 tons each. So they are going to be on the bigger side, and that won't be until they finish out the Prima class, but they're going to be bigger than the Norwegian Prima. So they're going to be some good size. I know for everybody that was hoping that we would eventually start hearing about smaller cruise ships coming out, well, it's not going to be Norwegian, not on their next order. Um, but they are going to be building a cruise dock there at Great Stirrup Key at their private island in the Bahamas, which is good news. Because right now it's a tender port and 
everybody knows how tender ports are. If the weather is just slightly choppy, slightly rough, and they think people are going to get tossed around in those tender boats, and so at least a physical dock is better. You can, chances are better you're going to be able to get in there, and it's easier for passengers to get off the ship. You don't have that tender boat hassle. Yeah. And but we're seeing that from all of the cruise lines because Norwegian's going to be doing it at Great Stirrup Key, Carnival's going to be doing it at Half Moon Key, and I think those are big improvements for those two. They really need them. Less places they can tender, just it's just a smoother day. Mm -hmm. and better chances that you'll actually be able to get to the private item. Tilda says, cruising-related, glad a passport lasts for 10 years, and also terminals that do the facial scanning in a separate line is very cool and fast. Love it. Yes. Galveston does that. Yeah, Galveston does that. I like that facial recognition. It makes things just go so fast. Mm -hmm. You got that passport, you, whoop, you look in the thing, the box turns green, you're free to go. I love that technology. I hope it starts going everywhere that, that it's possible for them to put that out because, yeah, traveling with the passport and being able to skip a whole bunch of mess by simply having it. I mean, and I didn't count all the other benefits that come with it, but the line skipping when you're getting off the ship is definitely a huge perk. And it, to me, it's worth having it just for that reason. That you can do the facial recognition. Andre says, 14 day Italy cruise. What would y'all recommend doing there? Eat pizza. <laughs> Eating would definitely be on that list. Try the pasta because the just watching cooking shows. Yeah. Pasta in Italy and pasta in America are two different things. Yeah, eat. I would definitely eat. You know what I've seen? And, you know, you of course, you're going to ask that question, and I'm not going to be able to say where I saw it. So I'll have to, uh, if I come across it. But I was watching some videos over on TikTok, and I can't remember the lady's name or the name of her channel. But she's in Italy, and she goes to a lot of the uh, real popular tourist attractions. But then she shows something that's like connected to it, but right next to it that like a lot of people don't even know about. And so they're not real heavy with tourists, but they're open to the public. You can go inside them. And she's been showing a lot of things that, you know, are associated to those that you don't you don't see on a regular basis. And uh, and I know I'm going to sound real dumb right now, but you got that real big fountain mm -hmm. that's real popular in Italy. Don't I don't know the name of it, but um, it's super popular. It's always crowded. Well, apparently, you can actually get underneath that fountain. And there's a way to get underneath there, and there's a whole history about it, how it works all underneath it, that it's not full of tourists. And so that would be the kind of stuff that I would want to go see if I was going to Italy. Yeah. California Linda suggests looking at the ports and Googling options. My favorite ports were Santorini, and I don't, I, I'm not going to butcher that. <clears throat> I agree. And Limoncello Gelato is awesome. Yeah. Gelato is really good. So you get some good, authentic gelato. There you go. Yeah. See, I mean, if it was me going to Italy, and I know me, and it's just the way I travel. I would simply be wandering around just looking at the architecture and soaking up the atmosphere. And of course, we'd be eating something. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go to Italy and not eat something. Um, that, but we've never been. So, as far as giving. You've never been. Okay. I've never been, but I've, I've been, been to Rome. Okay. <laughs> I just know I would be the architecture and just amazed at how old the, the buildings and stuff were. And mm -hmm. the history, <laughs> the, the, uh, the atmosphere, just, just be soaking it in to just be there <clears throat> would be amazing. I think. 
Um, I thought NCO would go against the grain, but no, nope, I'm sad they are not doing a smaller one for NCO. They don't perk match on Regent or Oceana. Yep. I, I thought, you know, when they went to the Prima class that was slightly smaller than some of their other ships, I thought maybe that's what NCL was going to do. Um, nope. They've turned around and gone large again. Uh, I thought that, that NCL might be, you know, uh, the one. I still think Royal Caribbean is probably going to be the next one to actually do it if they follow through if they actually build what you know has been dubbed or possibly going to be their discovery class of cruise ships if that ends up actually being the name. Sean says what's uh, facial recognition is easier to get into the country than it is to get on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> but I did see and I haven't seen it used or tested yet, but when you go through the TSA and you have that pre check. I know they were testing a facial recognition system for TSA pre-checks or what they were calling it self-checks. Um, so there is hope for airlines and for air travel. Um, maybe there's going to be the case where cruise lines are going to be able to, you know, lead the way and help out with some of these processes. Um, Andre says the Italy cruise was free thanks to the casino off. That's an even better cruise. Yeah. So not only are you going on a cruise to Italy, you're going on a free cruise to Italy. That's even better. That is absolutely even better. Jen says me too. So, but while we are talking about traveling, I am going to show you guys this real quick. Now, this is from Jeff and Linda. They did send us some stuff from their current cruise. And they can hop in and explain some of this. And there's even a little video in here at the end. And I wrote this name down because I'm going to mess it up. But it's a, a, a how do you say that? I don't, I don't even know what that is. Oh, I'll show you what it is. But it's like a, I don't uh, know what that letter is. I can't see it. I don't have my glasses on. But let me go ahead and show this here real quick. Go. Yeah, so swimming with whale sharks. I mean, look at those things. To be that close to a shark alone, and of course, you got to hug the koala. Walk over. Something like that, but apparently these things just hop around and they're just there and friendly and and things like that. So yeah, some some interesting, really cool pictures. I love the koala one. <laughs> yeah, now Tiffany is determined she that she up to me with the sloth. So now she got the koala. So now I gotta do the koala. So now you need to go hug a koala bear. <laughs> well, admittedly, I mean. I wouldn't mind. I've never had a chance to hug a koala either, so that would be really, really cool. I mean, that would be a, one of those once-in-a-lifetime type of experiences. But I think I would swim with those sharks. I mean, they were just right there. Yeah, that would be fun. To be that close to, to sharks, that would be... You could just say, you know, I swam with sharks. Don't kind of tell everybody what kind they were. Well, I didn't even really <laughs> know what whale sharks were until I saw the pictures. I did the same thing. I was like, wow, he swam with sharks. That's just really, really cool. So, so again, thank you for those pictures. Yes, I love it. Those, uh, they made me want to do an Australian cruise. I'm not going to lie. So. Clay says they better never do facial recognition because my ugly mug will break the camera. If I can make it through, anybody can make it through. We're good. Um, Jen says, oh, wow, incredible. Yeah, they, they've been on, like, this whirlwind awesome cruise that's, I mean, they've been on this cruise for a while. Yeah, they have. And so, yeah, it, that's just amazing. Chica's here. Um, Evening, Chica, welcome. Andre says, I see that Carnival has an island called Celebration Key. Uh, yes, that is going to be their new or one of their new uh, private destinations to add to the 
carnival collection of private destinations. Um, they've got quite a few. They do have quite a few between Princess Key, Half Moon Key, Celebration Key. They have Mahogany Bay. Um, Carnival's kind of racking them up. But they're popular. Mm -hmm. And so Celebration Key should be opening this year. And it looks nice. And once it's open, we'll have more information on that. They are still just releasing information and dropping the hints and of everything that's going to be going on in Celebration Key, you know, building up that anticipation, running that PR machine. Um, Clay says, I don't swim with my lunch. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know, though. Shark is pretty good. I don't know about whale shark, but shark is pretty good. Well, see, that's why you're not allowed to swim with, like, king crabs. One, it's cold, but two, you'd be falling around with a shell crab. You know, I could just see you, with, you know, with the, with, the, with the tub of butter dragged along behind you as you're chasing them guys down. So, yeah, there are certain things you're not allowed to swim with either. Uh, Cruising Karen says, hello, everyone. Attila says, I didn't break the face scan machine so it must be industrial strength for it to work on me um places so y'all live in texas yes we live in south texas yep our closest major city would be uh san antonio, san antonio. uh california london shares you also have an australian mickey that i will be bringing on the group cruise <laughs> correct pronouncing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh that that an Australian Mickey, I love it. <laughs> I did tell her that when you guys did that email, she get very, very excited. Yes, I'll have an Australian Mickey. That's true. You do not have an Australian Mickey. So thank y'all for that. Yes, she thank will you very much. It, it, believe me, she will have a home set and ready to go for that. Absolutely. Bajarn <laughs> says I went to basic training in San Antonio. Oh, so either uh, my kid for basic, that would have been Lackland. Yes, I think it's the Sam. Uh, I thought Fort Sam was just AIT, Advanced Individual Training. Places San Antonio. Oh. You don't live in San Antonio. <laughs> oh, that's the closest town. It just happens to be the closest major city to us. And yes, Lackland. I haven't been on Lackland since 1990. 89, 90 was the last time I was on at, uh, Lackland Air Force Base. I don't know that I've ever been on Lackland. I've been on Fort Sam and I've been on Brooks, Randolph Brooks. Well, years ago, and I mean years ago, you can figure 89, 90, that. that that's a hot minute ago. But back when I was in high school, I knew I was going to join the military. I, I knew it ahead of time. So if you were in high school, JROTC, it helped you out when you got the military. You started off as in a little bit of a higher rank. So I did that in high school. And it, where I went to high school, it was Air Force ROTC. And so they did their summer training for officer, cadet officers. Um, was done at Lackland. So I actually have spent a little bit of time out there, but that was long, long time ago. Um, Cruising Karen was born and raised in San Antonio. What about it? I just don't like the construction. There's so much construction, road yeah. construction and... And traffic and it's, it's a mess. We live in a small town and even that small town is... 15 plus miles away from our house we live out in the country and so when we get in these big 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 cities like that and that traffic is just all over the place it's it's just not a happy it's not a happy place for us we like our space and our trees and our room and, and things like that so clay says san antonio is a baby city compared to h-town Yes, it is. Yeah. I will drive 
an hour or more out of my way to go around Houston. When we go to Galveston to the cruise port, I will take every back road to avoid going anywhere near Houston. I drive all the way down to Baytown or Bay City, and then I cut across to Hitchcock, and then I come up that way just to avoid driving in Houston. My life is so much, so you know, it's so much stress for less stress to, to drive that way than it is to go anywhere near Houston. So in, in Houston drivers, I swear to God, they're all out to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're not used to Houston, you boy, you need a like a, a half a bottle of Prozac before you go driving through there. Because it, it's it's stressful for a non-experienced Houston driver. Yes. Um, Nelly lives at 35 near Temple, Colleen, Fort Hood area. That's not far from us. No, and I, the last place I was stationed in the Army was on Fort Hood. I was at Fort Hood for eight years. So, familiar with that area, too. Um, Bajaran says, I'm old. 90 was halfway through my career. <laughs> <laughs> Clay Clay said, so is 410 really a loop? Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. So is 1604. They are big old loops that you just cannot escape. And all full of construction and you know an ever-growing city. And they just they've never been able to stay ahead of the amount of traffic that hits those roads. And so it's constantly under construction. And I'm sure for the people that live there, it's just like it's a breeze. But boy, we're not used to it, and it's not our cup of tea. Matilda says, I live in Houston, and I don't like it either. <laughs> There's James. <laughs> Evening, James. James. Uh, speaking of Galveston, which airport is the best to use when going to the port? Okay, so we've talked about this one before, and I think we decided hobby. Depend it, 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 it will always depend on your... Uh, <clears throat> Your airlines, but I've heard Hobby is the best one. We drive, uh, but Hobby, I've heard, is the easiest, less stressful, and closest, of course. Mm -hmm. But they do have shuttles and transportation from both to take you into Galveston. Yes. So. Uh, California Linda at Chica. Hello. I am having fun. So many activities to select among the scavenger hunt and ship Olympics. What is Ship Olympics? I've never heard of that. I constantly participate. You miss the barbecue in Alvin. Um, Sheikha says, my husband was also stationed in Fort Hood for a long time. Yeah. I know when I was there, it was 42,000 uh, soldiers were there when I was there, active duty soldiers. And back then... It was very near the end of my career. Uh, I was in the fourth fourth ID before they moved to Carson. And then when they moved to Carson, I got orders to stay on Fort Hood, which is crazy. It, it was always this funny joke about Fort Hood that once Fort Hood sucked you in, you could never, ever escape. My whole division left. They still managed to give me orders to stay on Fort Hood. So... Uh, she could tell the like, California when it seems you've been gone forever. Right? It seems like <laughs> that for, you know, at least the last month of lives, they've been out enjoying the cruise. And you know what? Have fun. Enjoy it. More power to them. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a bucket list cruise yeah, that they've definitely. been planning for years and years and years. I completely get it. Our, our bucket list cruise, our mecca cruise that we've Plan and plan and plan and just the booking yet is our British house cruise. At least that's mine. Um, so I get that bucket loose cruise that you, we watch year after year, and it's like God, we just we just can't pull it this year, you know. Well, one whole part of that cruise is twenty eight days long. So yeah, no, I completely get it. if you get that opportunity, that chance, that choice to. Take that kind of cruise, I'll why not jump on in a second if it was available. 
So Nellie's asking, quick random question. When you go off ship at port, what do you take with you? Obviously, passport stays in your stateroom, yes? Yes. Um, so when we get off a port, um, Tiffany has a whole backpack full of things. What all I carry is I carry my picture ID, so I take my driver's license. I take one credit card and some cash, plus camera equipment and stuff like that. That's all I take in port with me. I have a picture of my passport on my phone. Uh, Tiffany typically has her backpack and in there she has a first aid kit. What else do you carry in there? I usually carry a bottle of water, the first aid kit, sunscreen, depending on what activities we have going on that day, towels, uh, extra change of clothes. Um, I have my driver's license and my money. Um, and then medicine, like ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. Um, I even carry, uh, like moleskin just in case we get a blister or something like that. That way we have that, um, just, and ponchos. I carry ponchos in there as well. Yeah. Cheap dollar store ponchos. That, and they're, they're super tiny when they're in your backpack. They're like this big, but we've done stuff to make sure that when we carry off the ship is super tiny. Even our towels. We don't even use ship towels. We have our own towels. And I don't know if I have, do I have one over there? I don't know if there's one over there on the shelf. But even our towels, we have these microfiber towels that we carry. And I've got one here in your room. I mean, this is the towel right here. You can see. But that's an entire beach towel in there. It's just a microfiber. And it, it's a full-size beach towel. But that's an example of something that goes in our backpack. Because those ones that ships give you, they're they're super nice, but they take up so much space in a bag or a backpack. And then if you've got a family, two, three people, and carrying those giant towels. So, yeah, a little first aid kit, a couple of towels. Um, and just depending on what your activities are for the day, because I know usually if we go to a place where we're going to be in the water, I will take an extra change of clothes and carry it in my backpack just because I don't want to get back on the bus wet. Um, but yeah, so we have videos on that. I guess I need to do an updated uh, video. Yeah, uh, there you go. That would be a good one of what we take. But the basics, one picture ID cash one credit card for the just you never know or they don't accept cash um and a picture of your your passport <laughs> and i do recommend and it's it again it's a personal choice a credit card is better than a debit card in my opinion um it's easier to control the fraud sometimes in four countries it happens so um, she got at Andre. Where does your cruise start and end? Clay, I will be in Galveston tomorrow, not for a cruise, though. I'm gonna go back to Galveston as soon as I find out the, the Texas is. Oh, I'd like it to be for a cruise, but when the Texas finally moves across to Pier 21 and opens, I'm definitely going back down there. I want a tour of that ship. Um, Clarifies Alvin is on Highway 6 towards Galveston. Ship, Olymp Ship Olympics is a daily silly game chosen by a cruise director. Highway 6, we really, that's, uh, that's the one we get on in Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. We jump on 6 right there. So I know Highway 6. Are we on Shipmate? Yes. It didn't fit all in it. So I think we're called High Seas Cruise on Shipmate. I'll have to double check on that. But I think it's High Seas Cruise. Because it, it wouldn't fit the whole name. So, but we're definitely on there. Shipmate is awesome. Chica, those towels are nice. Uh, James, where do you get the towels? They look perfect. We got them off of Amazon. Uh, you can put a link. I can add a link to them. The, they are on Amazon. Almost everything we get for cruising, we've gotten off of Amazon. I have Amazon links um, in almost all of my videos. But I can I will add to this video here. Once it's uh, we finish up, I'll add the specific link for the towels. And they're not expensive, and you can pick them in different sizes. And colors. And colors. Yeah, Tiffany has a green one. I have a yellow one, so we can tell them apart. Um, 
Um, but yeah, I don't know if James remembers. We did have those and use those while we were in uh, Mr. Sancho's. In Mr. Sancho's, and we had them in. You pulled yours out in uh, Harvest Key. Yeah. Yeah. So we did use them on the ship too. Um, Jen, we use the same towels, light and small. I carry the same things Tiffany does. Hubby brings same as Chris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, enough to make sure you don't get in trouble, but not too much that you got to lug it around all day. And Tiffany's backpack always starts off fairly empty, and it also gives us a place if we buy anything, pick anything up, gives us a place to pack it back to the ship and not have to carry bags and things like that. So, yeah. We try to be minimalistic when we get off the ship, just simply because we don't want to lug it all over the planet. Yeah. We really don't. And I carry more camera equipment than anything, um, just with extra batteries. And and uh, the only other thing I would add to that list is Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags. Yeah. Make sure if you have like sunscreen or bug spray, bug spray is another good thing to carry in your backpack. Um, make sure that you put those in Ziploc bags, like the gallon size, um, just in case they decide to spray or leak. It doesn't get all over your other stuff. I use them for camera equipment. I keep batteries in there. I keep my cameras and stuff in the Ziploc bags. You're on the beach. I don't want a bunch of sand running around on stuff. My cameras are waterproof, but at the same time, I want to keep them clean and dry when they're not in use. And so... Ziploc bags. I use a ton of Ziploc bags every cruise. Um, Clay says he's a big boy and causes his own solar eclipse. <laughs> California, Linda Ishika. Yes, we have been gone since the end of February. Currently homeward bound. Microfiber towels are the best. Sunglasses and hat. hat. Tiffany's list covers it all. <laughs> Yeah, I think for experienced cruisers, our, everybody's list is pretty similar. I would say, you know, everybody knows that this is what you need to survive and, you know, get along and have a really good day, but not so much you don't like it around. That's really the big thing. Is And I would say if you're a new cruiser, think about this. Do you want to carry that around all day? And if you don't, is there a better alternative for something that you need? And I guarantee if you ask an experienced cruiser, there probably is a better alternative. And they'll point you right where to get it. Um, James says he should have known it was Amazon since he works there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're affiliated with Amazon. That That is absolutely true. Uh, but truth is, Amazon has just about everything you could possibly want. Um, I'm a fan of Amazon for the simplicity of, oh, look, I want this. And boom, there's 40 versions of it now you can pick from. Tiffany can pick the most obscure thing and show me, like, what do you think about this? And I'll be like, well, let's look on Amazon. And boom, there it is. Almost every time. So love Amazon, hate Amazon, whatever the case may be. If you're looking for it, Amazon's probably got it. I mean... <laughs> Sheikah said bug spray is in the cestus. Yeah, in the Costa Maya. Yes. Uh, we've had it then. And a couple of times in like September time frame on, in Cosmel, they get those itty bitty little bugs that fly around a lot. And so bug spray is, is helpful. And you can get bug spray in just little travel size bottles. Yeah, wherever you pick up your travel, like shampoos and lotions and... They'll have little cans of bug spray like that. So you don't even have to have a, a big old giant can. And plus the little cans will help you get through if you're flying. Mm -hmm. So the travel size ones are good, if, especially if you fly into cruise ports. So that that's that's a big thing right there. We do, I mean, we drive to a lot of them. So, but even then, what's the carry all that mess? You decided on your neck. <laughs> No, not yet. Um, you all right? Yeah. The O pollen here has been so bad. I mean, you just stand outside, you can literally feel it falling off the trees onto you. It's been awful. Um, I lost my whole trip. I haven't decided my next cruise. Not yet. I know we were still talking about November. 
I'm a little torn on doing November the 17th, not because I don't want to go, honestly, because Tiffany can't go. And I've I've cruised solo before, and I will cruise solo again. It's kind of hard to go without my cruising buddy though sometimes. <laughs> um especially when that cruise is going to someplace she wants to go back to. Um, that she didn't really get to enjoy and experience the way she wanted to last time. So I don't know how you feel about that. I got a little side eye said where it's going. I'm telling her to go have fun. See, she says that on the lives. Then when the live is off, I get the side eye. You know that. What you're talking about. So still still working on that. I, I got a little bit of time on that one still. Um Jen says in the Caribbean there is den gay problem brain bug spray. It's always a good thing to have, period. Um, I agree with that. Even if you don't use it. It's, it's one of those better safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. It's always a better safe than sorry. Nellie said, good to know on bug spray in September. We will be in Cozumel. Thank you for answering. Much appreciated. That is exactly what these lives are for. That is exactly what this channel is for. And we have such an awesome group of people that are here week after week. If you ever have questions, this is definitely a place to come get them answered. Yes. Somebody in this group, in this chat, knows the answer. It's, it's been that way for a long time, and it's it works out beautifully. Desiree's here. Good evening. Good evening. And Clay said he'll be your cruising buddy. <laughs> cruising with you. Um, James says his cruise plans are on hold as he had an accident on work at work on Monday. James, oh, are you okay? Yeah, are you okay? That's the big thing right there. Are you got Are you okay? Wow. No accident. Yeah. We, we're not even allowed to sit, say the A word at work because every time a certain somebody says the A word at work, we it have happens. So that word is not allowed. Or James. Yeah. That's. Yeah, James is our cruising buddy. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. Well, James, everybody's wanting to know if you're okay. You got to type faster. <laughs> yeah. We we, we all want to make sure you are okay. But yeah, wow. Request has been sent. James thinking of you, speedy recovery. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, see, now I'll go cruising with anybody. Yes. But boy, to not be able to cruise with you and not to be able to cruise with James, woo. I had suffered a shoulder injury and a torn rotator cuff injury that might need surgery. Oh. Okay. See, that's when you have the surgery and then recover on the ship because you know relaxing calm that's true i mean if i was the doctor i would suggest that you know a comfortable chair in the atrium in the evening you know with a cool drink might just speed recovery along yep so yeah, but we wish you the the best speedy recovery speedy recovery hopefully you know this goes super smooth and you can get back to it as, as soon as possible yes i mean it sucks anytime anybody gets hurt um <laughs> said made it through a drunk day at mr sancho's and gets hurt at work <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> true that is true uh, that is that is true. <clears throat> it says I'm slow because I'm trying to type with my left hand. Hey, that that is okay. That is okay. We're more concerned about your health yeah. and your well being than than anything else. Yes. Um, and it only took one cruise, and James is now a permanent cruising buddy. 
So yeah, wish you the best recovery so we can get back out there. Um, that's how much fun we had. Yeah. That was how much fun we had. And, you know, it's not going to go that way, but could you imagine if the group crews went to Cosmo and then as a group, we could all go to Mr. Sanchez? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'd just like to put that out there in the cruiserverse. Cruiserverse. In the cruiserverse. Can you imagine if the group cruise was at Mr. S wow. Um, wow. <laughs> We'd have a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, we would. Yes, we would. Yes. Clayton, I hate to say it is better. It was better. It was your shoulder and not one of your wheels. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but that's all right, James. You, know, you got a whole group of people from all over the place thinking about you and sending you healing wishes and yes. healing thoughts. So you're going to get better and you're going to get back out there. Um, she could said that would be fun. <laughs> It would be something. <laughs> I'm not sure how Mr. Sancho's is going to be the one we leave. <laughs> James says, yes, very true. I'm doing okay. Very sore, but got shoulder immobilized and some good pain pills. <laughs> like a Mr. Sancho's margarita. <laughs> yes. The giant said, that's a bar night to remember, I think. <laughs> we would all go. We would all have fun. In theory, we might remember it later. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, I mean, we don't drink a lot, but boy, we had a damn good time at Mr. Sancho's. Yes, yes, we did. Um, it was fun. I would go back. Yes. I absolutely would go back. James says, thank you for all the well wishes. And Clay says, everyone have a great night. I have an early day tomorrow. We'll have a great day tomorrow and a great rest of your week. Yep, and thank you for being here. We really, really appreciate it. We'll see you next week. We're here every week. Kind of like a rat that won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Set off the fit. <laughs> you okay there? You sure? Yeah. Yeah. So, other than that, it's been quiet. I did check Carnival still. Still has not released any further updates for 2026 itineraries yet. I am watching them week after week, but still nothing yet. But you know, I did have something interesting. I have something interesting. A little bit of history that I'm sure most of you guys know. Did you know, no, it was April 10th, 1912. This is the day that Titan, the, the, well, the, the Titanic set sail. It was the beginning of her very uh, tragic cruise. Um, but yeah, 1912, April 10th of 1912 was the first sailing of the Titanic. Now, we all know how the Titanic started. We, we all already know what a, a terrible tragedy the Titanic was. But there actually was something else that happened that day involving the Titanic. Kind of a little side story. I was, you know, listening to some Titanic stories, but apparently... The day the Titanic was set to sail, she was scheduled to depart at noon. Okay, like any ship, cruise ship, ocean liner, she has a schedule. It's got to keep her schedule. Apparently, there was a, a group of passengers. They were down at the local pub, uh, having a few drinks, some laughs. Prior to boarding the Titanic, they realized they lost track of time. Realized they were running late and had to run to the cruise ship only. The gangway was being pulled up, and they were denied boarding. And the Titanic left without these individuals. Now, luckily for these individuals, it turned out that this was a really good thing, that they did not get on board that ship, because we know how the Titanic story ended. However, I do believe this may be one of the first recorded incidences of peer runners. Mm -hmm. That peer runners existed all the way back in 1912. So apparently, for well over 100 years now, there's been dummies that can't tell songs. 
I thought that was an interesting historical fact that pure runners are over 100 years old. It's not a new phenomenon. It's an old one. Maybe one of the first recorded incidences of pure running. And they were denied boarding and they were left standing on the dock. And then they wrote a nasty comment into, into uh, you know, until the brand ambassador John Hill of Titanic Cruise Lines or White Star at the time, and, which is, no, John's not that old. <laughs> Someone's going to go to John and be like, you know, he said you were like a thousand years old. No, I did not say that. But you know, they, you know, they had to write a cruise comment about how the ship left without him. Rick's here. So, so what do you think? Pier runners, 100 years old. I'm sure it's longer than that. I'm sure it's back <laughs> in the 16, 1700s, you know, back when the pirates were. I've seen a bunch of uh, like videos, TikTok, YouTube short videos and stuff of some of these Titanic museums they have. Uh, I, think I think it's in Missouri. A couple here in the United States, they they look really, really interesting. And if I ever am passing through there, I want to stop. Um, we were in Las Vegas in 2021, 20, 2020, 21. It's 21. It was during COVID. It was during was COVID, closed. but the Titanic exhibits there were closed at the time. We didn't get to actually see anything, but I wouldn't mind checking some out just for the, for the history part of it. Uh, let's see. James, uh, <coughs> James up a little further up says, I will say that Chris and Tiffany were a great couple to cruise with and had a blast and will cruise again in future with them. Um, Rick said hello. Ch Sheikah says she checked yesterday. I'm not sure what we checked. She, the, the, the 2026 okay. schedule released. We've gotcha. been watching for um, California Linda shares hope Tiffany is feeling better. We saw the Titanic Museum in Melbourne. It was the best exhibit we have seen. Um, and then we're right here. And then Cruz and Karen, I've been to Mr. Sanchez a lot, and it's awesome. Awesome. It, but the last two cruises, we've gone to Cabana Beach. Beach. It's wonderful and more secluded. It's part of, shh, I can't say that. Yeah, there's a couple other ones we want to try. Um, I mean, there's there's still so much stuff in Cosmel we have yet to get to. Um, that we can continue to be cruising to Cosmel for a while and have new things to see there. And Cosmel is, is an awesome cruise port. Mm -hmm. Just for the fact that there's always something new to do that we just haven't been able to get to yet. And we do something in Cosmel all the time. And we, I think we barely scratched some of the surfaces over there. Jen says, proof you can't fix stupid. Oh, Chris and Tiffany, if you go on a British Isle cruise, you need to visit the Titanic Museum in Belfast. Yeah, I mean, the dry dock where she was built is, is still there. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen videos of that, and that is on my checklist. That Yeah, when we get off there, definitely want to just stand there. And realize what was built there, and you know how much history started right there. Tell the fun says a hundred years of not knowing how to tell them. Right. James loves his Mister Sancho's. It too. Um, hey, Rick, um, Jean, probably as long as there have been passengers on ships, someone has been late. That is true. I just think that it's it's funny that. You know, not the Titanic and the situation and the tragedy, but there's a, a story of peer running in, involved in her departure that day. It, you know, you see all the videos of the, it's, it's constant. And, you know, and then these people get left behind and it's the cruise line's fault. What, 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 you know, the cruise line should be taking care of its passengers. You should be thinking about my safety and my welfare and my being. You know, and it shouldn't be leaving me someplace, which to me translates it to, I'll be as late as I want. I just expect you to be there. You know, and it's your fault that you left and left me here. That it's turned into these days. You know, and it's also a pretty cool example of, you know, 
they're not inventing anything new. <laughs> Clearly not inventing anything new. Rick says we go to Del Mar Latina Beach Club, a short walk from the Royal Piers, adults only, 30 max capacity, and all inclusive for $39. Very relaxing. <laughs> the list of things to do in Cosmo gets longer and longer and longer. And we still want to go check out like Paradise Beach, and then, then there's a couple other ones, and now we've got some new ones. And we just have to cruise to Cosmo. Yes. All right, let's go tomorrow. Y'all suck. You shook your head, yes. I'm reading. You were shaking your head, yes. Um, Rick, Attila must be doing good. Booking cruises, Harmony October, Jubilee in January, and Mariner in April. Mm -hmm. Awesome cruises. Hey. Have a great time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Attila says can't decide, but next time they're in Cozumel will be late November. We kind of want to try the Del Mar Beach Club too. That'll still be good in November because it's still warm there. Yeah. So that one would be good just to try it. Mm -hmm. Come back and tell us all how it is. Um, yeah, I mean, Cozumel is just one of those places that I can keep going back to over and over and over again and great time there every single time we go there mm -hmm. um and i thought I, you know you'd think you'd be getting tired of cosmo but nope sure don't it, it, it's just it's, it's like a, a cruise port that keeps on giving yes giving a new adventure a new experience and i mean there's still a whole list of shore excursions that we haven't even gotten to that i want to do down there think we will hoping for sunny day yeah just never know about the weather yeah um but i do know we've been there in no we were there late october early november when we were there for the halloween cruise mm -hmm. when we were on we were on the ship over halloween so we were there in november the very beginning of november in cosmo oh yeah we were in the water the ocean it was warm it was beautiful the water felt great, so I think you'll still be on. It'll be perfect in November still. Oh, yeah. I think it'll be definitely be perfect there in November. Uh, we need to try the Eastern Caribbean, some great places there, too. That's exactly why the group cruise is going to be Eastern Caribbean, just for that reason, because I agree with you definitely wants to get to more of the eastern side so but you know it's one of those things where you know if a good cruise or a good ship comes up especially a ship i've never sailed on before i'm gonna jump on it i'm gonna jump on it and if i had to guess what my next cruise is gonna be and it's purely a guess at this point i think it might be uh mariner of the seas Think might be one of my next ones. She's one that I have been looking at maybe for the September time frame-ish area. There. It's been a hot minute since we've been on Royal Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So we haven't been on Royal Caribbean since Voyager of the Seas. I feel like we're due for a little Royal Caribbean. Of course, we're also due for a little carnival. We haven't been on carnival in over a year. Yeah, and over a year we've been focusing on Princess. Mm -hmm. So, James, if one cruise I have not taken is the Southern Caribbean out of San Juan. I said there's so many good choices out there. I mean, you almost need a lifetime of cruising to get everywhere you could possibly go and see everything you could possibly see. I uh, love St. Thomas, St. Martin, and Kurtz. Yeah. Been to all of them in a single cruise on Liberty of the Seas. Mm. No, Mariner's in uh, Galveston. The Mariner of the Seas is in Galveston. So, she's going to be there for a while, I think.
We did the ABCs in February and was amazing. Yeah, I've heard such beautiful. It's it. I think it would probably be easier to list places that you don't want to go and that are not worth visiting than it would be to ever list the number of great places that are on a cruise and the awesome experiences you can have. And honestly, off the top of my head, I can't even think of a place I would not cruise to. I don't think we've ever been to one that's like, ooh, I never want to come here again. You know, even the ones that aren't popular, we had fun. At. Yeah. You know, if you look at like your uh, Progresso, you know, a lot of people don't care for Progresso. We always have fun at Progresso. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Freeport in the Bahamas, you know, it's an industrial port. You see ships and dry dock there. But we left the port area and we had a good time that day. We had a blast. Yeah. Uh, so. Virgin Sailing out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, at least for now. I'm not sure how long she'll be there. Yeah, she is doing the full season there, which could be, you know, six to eight months. James loved to do the ABCs one day. Um, Sheikah says, I have yet to cruise to the Southern Caribbean. Jen says, Nassau. <laughs> See, a lot of people say Nassau. And, and I know that that's not uh, everybody's favorite cruise port. And I've still had plenty of good times in Nassau. I've had a lot of fun in Nassau before. Rick said Mariner will be uh, in Galveston May 6th. Okay, so she's not there yet. Okay. Uh, Sheikah says, I'd love to visit Progresso. A lot of history. Yeah, and, and I get it. Progresso is not everybody's favorite port. The water is not crystal clear in Progresso because it's in the Gulf uh, versus the Caribbean. So the water is definitely green versus clear. Uh the cruise port itself is super tiny. You got a two-mile bus ride to get into Merida. Um, but I, we've just wandered aimlessly all through that town. And even the locals say it's, it's safe here. It's one of the safest cities you can walk around in. And we've had great experiences with the people there. Um, I've got a tour guide that I just happened to go on a tour with by myself. Tiffany wasn't with me a couple years ago and I was the only one that signed up for the excursion. So it was me and the guy. And every time I go back to Progresso, I see him and he's like, you're back. You know, it's like you made a a friend, a, friend, a lifelong friend just by going to these places and Oh, I think that's really cool. Phyllis has never been that far east, far south Caribbean. Uh, she, James, at Sheik, I'm thinking about it maybe first part of the year next year. Tell us that so ABCs would be very nice. Nassau, we had a lot of in the new port area. It's a good vibe now. We were there in February. Yeah, we, we've had fun. I've We've walked. One year we walked all over Nassau. Mm -hmm. I mean, walked everywhere. And we had some adventures in Nassau. You know, we've seen some some stuff in Nassau that make you go, what? That's the time we saw that the the person escaped from the sane asylum. Yeah. And the police were chasing them. Um, But of course, you know, you could see that downtown, you know, here. So. That's not necessarily specific to that country, but yeah, Nassau. I've had a blast there. I think next time I go to Nassau, I want to check out Margaritaville in Nassau. I think that's my next Nassau adventure plan there. Or if we go on Royal Caribbean, that new Royal Caribbean Beach Club should be available. Yeah. So California Linda shares we climb shit. Shit. Yeah. Um. Shitsons, I can't say that in Progresso, it is now protected by the government. Yeah, there's there people that have good stories in Progresso. I think some of the negativity that comes out of Progresso is it takes a couple extra steps, 
and you have to be a little open-minded until you get to where you want to be in, in Progresso. And if you go into it open-minded and you're willing to leave the cruise port and go into the city, you have a whole different perspective of it. Um, but we did a beach club in Progresso before that was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's the time I scared the lady out of the water. Yeah. So, um, so John, gotta go. Thanks for spending the time with us. Uh, Attila says, Yes, fun. We walked all over. Stay close to tourist area. There is going gang activity below Shirley Street. Yeah, no, we always do that. We don't, we don't wander into places that just don't feel right. Mm -hmm. Um, if it doesn't feel right, doesn't give you that kind of happy vibe, I won't go wandering down those types of streets. Because I'm going to get back on that cruise ship on time, one way or the other. And so we're really safe about that. Plus, if I have Tiffany with me, I'm definitely paying extra attention. So. Uh, cruising Karen says Margaritaville in Nassau is next. Yeah, it looked really pretty. I got some, like, some outside video of it where the last time, when I was there last time. So I think I'd like to go inside it next time. <laughs> All right, I think we are going to get ready to wrap it up for tonight. I think poor Tiffany is trying to hold in the coughing as much as possible over here. I'm going to get her medicated and maybe some tea with lemon or something in it to help with these allergies. Yes. Get her to Karen says use the same self-preservation you would use in America. Exactly. Same common sense. If it don't feel right, don't go. What do you think about the new feature on a new MSC ship called the cliffhanger, a giant swing out over the water? I did a video on that today. Yeah, I actually did a video about that today. Uh, I think it's a gimmick. I think a lot of that stuff that these cruise lines are doing are gimmicky. It's to attract new cruisers to say, we have the newest thrill ride at sea on our ships. But you know they're going to charge for it. You know it's probably not going to be cheap. And I just, I wonder how long, you know, those kind of things stay popular before people are looking for the next thing. The, you know, what's, what's the new thing, the new trend, the new thing I can go try. They got that one on, was it Icon of the Seas, where it takes you out over the side of the ship, like on one of those rope courses, and then it drops you. And you basically like hang from your rope. You know, it's a hundred dollars to do that. A hundred dollars for them to basically drop the platform out for you, you kind of fall and hang in your harness. But those are one and done. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would do it once. You know, and I would film it, and then I would be like, cool, I don't need to ever do it again. So I think a lot of these gimmicky things are one and done. And, and the cruise line should focus on what makes them cruise lines. And it's not a thrill ride, in my opinion. So I think it's a fad that will go away, eventually. So, um, let's see. James is laying down. Time to get some more ice on his shoulders. Say it, telling everybody, have a good night. Uh, hope you feel better, Tiffany's. California Linda says, good night, everyone. See you next week. Rick says, everyone have a great week. Chica, I don't think Progresso fits the typical Caribbean port, and that is why people don't like it. That's a valid point. Yeah. It's uh, not me, not the kids. <laughs> um, Jen says, feel better. Thank you both for the live streaming. Well, thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Um, until this is night, y'all. Have a great week. P.S. Save it for Saturday. I read the original comment to John Field from the snoozing passenger. Chica <laughs> um, says, see you next week. And Rick says, I get a great thrill out of an extra strong margarita at the bar. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I did not I did not save the snoozing, the snoozing comment for Saturday. The snoozing comment will actually be out tomorrow morning. Only because I think that particular comment needed a more detailed explanation as to why those kinds of things can happen on a cruise ship. Um, that one was left about rudeness and ugliness and, you know, for the most part, I guess, than it was about a complete lack of understanding about the policy, even though 
I guarantee you that when that happened, when it occurred, they were explaining the policy and they still wrote all that mess in anyway. Um, so they could just be thick headed too. But yep, appreciate everybody being here. I'm going to get her <laughs> juiced up here. That way she can hopefully stop coughing and everything. Like they watch as soon as we end the live, she'll be, she'll stop coughing anyway. It's Murphy's Law. But Tell us that her comment was pretty rude at the end, but oh well. Yeah, the gratuities thing. I yeah. Like I said, it, it, there, there's a whole story to that that they surely didn't convey in that comment. And and I definitely go into that policy a lot more tomorrow and ways to avoid that happening to people because it's really, really easy. Yeah. And it's really, really simple. And for most people, they never faint it because they 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 follow the policy without even realizing it. That's how easy it is. So there's been other stories. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, there'll be a video out for Saturday. I got some doozies for this Saturday. I always do, no matter no matter what, there's always somebody that's willing to write something crazy enough and continue the Saturday epic adventures. So, but again, thank you everybody for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, these things are always a ton of fun. I will put the link uh, in the bottom of this video after we get done here with the live stream for the towels, mm -hmm. in case anybody is interested in those. But thank you everybody. And like always, we'll see you out on the high seas. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.